yoga. Mm -hmm. I also believe in freedom of sexuality and women being empowered, and that's something that we do not hear in our culture, mm -hmm. um, especially American culture. So I'm gonna, um, one of the last poems that I'm gonna read is an erotic piece, um, and it's about women loving women, because I don't really hear enough about that. And I think that we should love each other, and if we're sexually attracted to each other, you know, love each other as well. Mm -hmm. But this piece right now, I wrote for my little cousin. She's one years old, and we share the same birthday. Um, and in my culture, I'm Latina, you know, my parents were not raised in this country. My grandparents were not raised in this country. We have very different ideals. You know, we don't necessarily tell our daughters every day, you're beautiful, you're smart, you can be bigger than what you are. So I wrote this for my one year old little cousin. Girls, you are beautiful. Big eyes, big lips, frizzy hair, flat chest, you are unique. You dance to the beat of your own drum, singing tunes from your own song. Legs strong, head in the sky, your eyes on the prize. Society, society tells you to be all that you can be, but how can you be when we live amongst patriarchy? We live in a world where what you feel emotionally cannot be how you react viscerally. If it is, then they deem you crazy or they dismiss you altogether. You're told that you are too tall, so become small. You're too fat, so you need to diet or starve. You are a complicated complexion staring back at yourself in the mirror. You do not fit in. Body conscious anorexic tendencies become your dreams. But baby girl, you are the birth of a nation. You are the mountains, the air. You are society's dream. See, I wish my mother would have told me this at 13 growing on 30 instead of 24 going on. I don't even know who the fuck I am anymore. Do not spend your days pleasing others. Your life is not a revolving door. Spend time figuring yourself out. Rebel. Stand up. Resist. Fight back. Do not fall back. Be loud, stand your ground, be you. You are courageous. Do not let the world tell you what's good enough, what's smart enough, what's pretty enough. This lies in your eyes, in your smile, in your inherent ability to turn sunshine out of these clouds. Girls, you are beautiful, and today is your day. Namaste. Thank you. I'm gonna read that to her when she actually knows what I'm saying. Because right now, she doesn't really understand. Um, so this is the second piece that I have for you guys. It's called Welcome to America. I'm hoping to wake up in a world where my sex isn't a commodity, where a mother can't feed her daughter and that little girl's sexuality isn't sold, where my gender's progression isn't put on hold, where I am not told that my short hair and my sass don't fit this feminine mold. I'm hoping that one day we can break through this, grass, this glass ceiling, empowering females faithfully. Welcome to America. Open your eyes and realize the truth. There's racism embedded in the seams of our American flag, not yours. The 50 stars, that's 50 lynch black men. The deepest blue of the Atlantic that transported my mother, your father, to this great nation built on the backs of slaves with the sweat of immigrants. White supremacy shadows the darkest of nights. By the dawn's early light, we watch as a gay man was tied to a fence and beaten. We watch as women, men, and children are shot at for entering our borders. There's one million people of color dead. That's institutionalized genocide. Our country gets richer while our people just get poorer. The prosperity of our children is stifled. Obama's nation consumed by death threats, gentrification covered up by urban renewal. You take from us cutting our nose to spite our face. I'm the backbone of the home of the free and the lands of the brave. But you step on me. You ask me to assimilate my culture, all in an effort so I could be the toppings on your salad bowl. Through blind eyes, we pledge allegiance to the flag that our forefathers made. From the cotton that was picked on our slave plantations, by the hands of women who were impregnated with the dreams of a new world, we pledge allegiance to the flag of inequality. Welcome to America. So I have one final piece for you guys.
guys, and I gave you a little forewarning. Now, I do, <laughs> I do mostly talk about politics because I am an activist. I've worked for a lot of NGOs, not just in America, but globally. It's really my passion to bring female equality to the forefront of all of our issues. It's a, it's a big deal right now if any of you guys follow politics. But on top of that, I really like to talk about sex. Because, <laughs> because not a lot of people do it, and if they do, everybody does it. Everyone does it. But I just feel like not a lot of people talk about having sex with a woman. Now, I think sexuality is fluid. You guys may believe what you like, but I believe that a woman can love a woman the same way a man can love a man, and vice versa. And because of that, I decided to write a poem about loving a woman. And what it's like to me, and if anyone here has ever loved a woman, I hope that this resonates with you. So I think I've jumped about you. Before today, of course. I've imagined you viscerally. I can feel you in my dreams. Your cinnamon sugar skin pressed against French vanilla me, the length of your body is underneath the sheets. I've kissed you. I've ran my fingertips down your spine. I've traced galaxies with my tongue. I've spoken lustful prophecies enticing you, submerging you like the Titanic. I've made love to your mind. I've gently fucked your brain, bringing you orgasms so insane that they resonate in your thoughts, leaving a lasting impression, impregnating your breath with my name. Say it. I've memorized you. I've mapped out your body. I know its terrain. From the slope of your neck to the mountains of your breast, I have traveled your canals. I've gently caressed your oyster until it opened up its shell, greeting me. Hands palming your ass, legs quivering like seismic earthquakes. I have tasted you. My tongue has made love to your womanhood like a castaway finding a source of fresh water. I have drank you until the very last drop, satisfying myself and gratifying your needs. I have finger fucked your deepest fantasies, <laughs> danced circles around your thighs, stared deeply into your almond shaped eyes. I have had you. I think I've dreamt about you before today, of course. I just hope that you dream about me too. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> 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 so, no, Venus, do you have any um, upcoming projects or websites, locations, folks may be able to find you in this great wide webby world? <laughs> Definitely. Warning, I don't have any social networks, so if you do try to find me, you will not find me. But I am a part of the Gem Drop, and we have a show next Thursday. Woo! This will be at the five spot, same time as now, and it's an erotic poetry event. So if you'd like to see me perform some more erotica, and the two lovely ladies sitting by the coat rack, who are members of the Gem Drop as well, we will all be performing. Please come through. Um, if you want to get in contact with me, ask me for my email. That's like the easiest way to contact me. Um, and check me out here next month. I'll be back. Yeah. Yeah.